I mean, I've been explaining over the past couple of weeks that Fox is like, it's like a cult. It's like the mob. And you don't get back in after you've been kicked out. You know, it is us versus them. Megan's been all over uh, this Tucker Carlson firing by Fox News, or I don't even know if we call it a firing name, silencing of Tucker Carlson and the cratering of their ratings. Megan, let, let's start here. We've seen Fox News lose Glenn Beck, lose Bill O'Reilly, lose Megyn Kelly, and keep rolling. This feels different with Tucker Carlson. This feels like it will permanently damage Fox News. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I do agree. My audience is calling them Fox Wiser. Um, it's, it's, it is different because, look, <laughs> O'Reilly had to pay out $69 million in sexual harassment settlements. I think the audience understood, look, we like Bill, but we get, as a matter of corporate governance, why he might have to go. I left because I wanted to spend more time with my family, so nobody was going to hold that against Fox. Uh, Glenn and Roger had a tumultuous relationship at times. That, you know, who knows what exactly was what was behind that, but I don't think, with all due respect to Glenn, he was in the same league as Tucker. I mean, none of us really is, because Tucker's ratings in that time slot are just absolutely astronomical, and his relationship with the audience is really kind of special and unique. And his point of view is really kind of special and unique, and he's the one who made Fox News worth tuning into. You can get generic GOP commentary kind of anywhere these days. What Tucker brings is a different kind of product, and they knew it. And so what they did with him is they pulled the rug out from under him and from under his viewers without so much as the respect of providing anyone with an explanation. And then when Tucker said, okay, you can keep your money, I'll just you know, go out there and keep talking to the audience. They said, no, not only no, but you will sit there while we try to absolutely destroy you. This guy who the audience had come to love. So yes, they are holding it against Fox and, and still, I mean, they're not over it. If you look at the ratings, they're still in the toilet. And I think they're going to remain there for a long, long time. Fox, if I were Fox, I'd be praying for, for Tucker to get back out there and use his voice and show everyone that he's okay. And I'd give him his check just on the chance of getting my audience back. Any chance that they would reverse course and try to bring him back? No, that would be very un-Fox-like. I mean, I've been explaining over the past couple of weeks that Fox is like, it's like a cult. It's like the mob. And you don't get back in after you've been kicked out. You know, it is us versus them. And, uh, you know, it's omerta. That's the mob code. Like, once you're out, you're out and you're dead to them. And so it would be very unlike the Murdochs to ever admit they made a mistake, especially one of this magnitude. I think they need to stick with, we've got some secret reason. It's a really good reason. If only you knew the reason, you'd be on our side. But we're not going to tell you the reason. And we're not going to tell Tucker the reason. And we're not going to tell Tucker's lawyer the reason. But just trust us. It's really, really compelling. They're not going to reverse it. I think what's really different here because, and again, my memory's fuzzy and not as clear as yours, but let's say Bill O'Reilly had more viewers, and I think he did at that time because I don't think the cable news space was as fractured as it is now. Yeah. But, but I believe where they really miscalculated is Donald Trump changed Republican voters and change their mindset and open people's minds to like, hey, there is this corporate media that's lying to us. And Tucker was their last thread of credibility with people who feel like their eyes have been opened. And, and so it's like Tucker's level of credibility that he gave the entire Fox News brand. When he leaves, and I say this not as with any animus or any, but it's just like, I won't go back on uh, Fox News, because I, without Tucker, they're just not as credible to me as they were with Tucker. I just had a request today to go on Jesse Waters show. Jesse's fine. I like, but I'm not lending my voice to Fox News because they just don't have the credibility they once had with me. Well, I understand that. And I have to say, I applaud your decision. I, I really think now is a time for anybody who Tucker was good to or who felt loyal to Tucker to stand in his camp. And it really would be a middle finger to him to go on right now because he's embattled and they've got their boot on his neck and they're not moving. So if you 
are supportive of Tucker, and I know you are, and I know you were brilliant on his show. Why would you support them, especially right now? I, I support your decision. He's in a serious battle with them, and they are being absolute bastards to the guy. And the audience should remember that. The, the audience is the only power Fox has. If they lose the audience, they lose this war with him. And so far, his audience has been great. They've been super loyal. And, you know, his overall number, that's the people who are over, that are 55 and over, um, they've lost half the audience. His demo, which is the number they really care about, 25 to 54 year olds, is down two thirds. Two thirds of the audience has disappeared in that time slot. I don't even know who the third is. The third must be people who don't pay attention to the news. <laughs> it's just like they've got Fox on, whatever they're doing their business. But the audience is furious right now. And up and down the prime time, they're getting hurt. It's not just the 8, 8 p.m. hour. The 9 p.m. is way down. The 10 p.m. is down. Uh, 7 p.m. is getting hurt. Double digits, all these shows. So the audience and people like you who are refusing to support them at the moment, they're having an impact. And until this is settled in a way that seems fair, I think they should keep the pedal down. Yeah, I don't. I've now been totally convinced the only place where I can find any semblance of truth is in the podcast world, is in the digital media space. And so I just don't have any reason to turn any of it on, and particularly Fox News. And it's it's. People like yourself, you know, the audience hasn't disappeared. They're showing up on your show. I, I see <laughs> the success uh, that you're having, and I think Tucker will have similar success. And and if you could tell him the kind of freedom and 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 success he's probably going to enjoy when he comes over and joins us in the digital space. One hundred percent. He knows it. And, you know, look, this is where he's planting his flag right now. That's why that's what he was saying when he came out with the, t with the Twitter announcement. He just announced it on Twitter and he'll be posting it on Twitter. But it's going to be a subscription based show. You know, if you go to TuckerCarlson.com, you can sign up for now. You can go to MeganKelly.com and sign up for my Friday newsletter, too. Um, but that's what he's doing. He's doing an end around corporate media. And this is another one of Fox News's miscalculations. They are not the only game in town anymore. They used to have a monopoly on conservative hosts and conservative commentary other than, you know, AM talk radio. And those days are long gone. Just look five years ago, never mind 10 years ago, uh, like when Glenn left, they, there wasn't a meaningful alternative digital lane. Glenn Beck helped create it, frankly. Um, now, if you are somebody who is in the center or right of center or established right, you have so many great options, right? You can listen to Jason Whitlock. You can listen to The Blaze. You can listen to the, anybody at The Daily Wire. You can listen to me. There are all sorts of wonderful voices that are out there who are not filtered and able to tell you the truth and can talk about things like race and gender and politics and big pharma and its control over some of these behemoths in the television industry. Honestly, never mind China, TikTok, you know, we could go down the list of the things that it's like uranium to touch if you're on conventional television, whether it's mainstream or cable. And so it's just it's it's a dying breed and it's yesterday's game. You know, Ben Shapiro said it to me best one time. He said, you know, what, MK, all the people who stopped me on the street to say, hey, I'm your fan. He said, if they're over 60 or if he said, if they're over 40, he said, if they're over 40, I know they know me from Fox News. If they're under 40, I know they know me from my podcast. It's just that's the nature of the beast. I think Tucker's going to thrive over in this medium and he's going to get old people and young people alike. And Fox will rue the day it turned on him. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.